We start with the NBA's jam-packed standings out west where the top four teams were separated by a single game. And let's start with the Raptors and the Thunder. That is Chet Holmgren. But they, of course, are led by Shea Gilgis Alexander. He had nine straight games of 30 or more. Misses there. R.J. Barrett gets the rebound. Josh Giddy fights for the ball, forces Barrett out of bounds, and they get the ball back. What happens? Well, yep, that's a turnover. So, with five seconds to go in the game, Thunder still down two. Giddy finds Aaron Wiggins, lays it in. So that ties the game. So you see it's 4.7 to go. Raptors with a chance. Barrett, that's a good look. We're headed to overtime. In the extra frame, SGA game fresher than Doug E. You see that move for the layup? Puts the squad up one. A minute to go, they're down three. Until he does that from there, ties it at 118. We got seven seconds to go in overtime. Gary Trent Jr. checks the clock. Drive, pull up. No. Can you say double overtime? Double overtime. Just four <laughs> minutes to play now. Thunder with the lead. Chet Holmgren. Bucket. They're up four. Under two to play. SGA to Wiggins. He had 14 assists that tied a career high, and that bucket put OKC up seven. And then SGA puts it away. He had 23 points. They win at 135-127. They're 35-15 and 15 to start this season. That's their best start since KD's final season with the Thunder. Timberwolves tied atop the West with OKC, hosting the Rockets, who are looking at a months-long fight for a play-in spot. Minnesota's lost three or four, so this is one of those uh, Anthony Edwards saying, there'll be no more of that. Timberwolves lead by eight here in the third. He get two back-to-back -back buckets. And then you realize here, acrobatic finish in the foul. He's on a bit of a heater. Six straight Timberwolves points. Working the wing. You get tired of watching him, go ahead and guard him. That's nine consecutive Timberwolves points for Edwards. You got any more in you? Sure. Uh, see, basketball is not a democracy. The best player gets as many shots as he wants. We're not spreading them around if one guy's really good. There's another three, 14 straight for him. Uh, they interrupted the streak at some point, but he didn't. He got another three, so 17-point uh, lead, even though it's he let another guy score in there. Edwards. Timberwolves up 19. Here we go. This is quite a third quarter for Edwards. He has a career high for points in a quarter. 22. That's a good 12 minutes. There you go. Makes the foot back. Five to go. Timberwolves up 26. They are working people. They're going for their 10th win by 20 or more points. Look out. Edwards, 32 points. They win 111.90. Chris Fitch, celebration for him. He's going to be with Western Conference All-Star Game coach. Match wins with Doc. All right, Clippers and the Heat. Kawhi and his squad have been on a tear as of late as well. We pick it up in the second half where Kawhi starts wearing out the defense like Corduroy. Finds Terrence Mann there in the corner for the three. And then here, Jimmy Butler driving, but Kawhi pokes it away. He is called the claw. And then finishes with the dunk. Now, again, Claw is his nickname, but you can also call him Mr. Efficiency. In this game, he went for 25 and 16. He's gone for 25 or more points on 50% shooting or better in five straight games. And he's just one of the weapons the Clippers have at their disposal right now. Because we go through the fourth quarter, Russell Westbrook drives, misses the dunk. Terry Rozier gets the rebound. Jaime Jaquez, played at UCLA. And the Heat take a one-point lead. But the Clippers had James Harden, and he decided to just put the game in a chokehold. Three there and one. It was a four-point play. Clippers up three. And then here, Harden over to Paul George. He knocks down a three. And then Harden. He's like, yo, how do you want it? How does it feel? Harden goes for 21 points, 11 assists, eight rebounds. Kawhi had 25 points, 11 rebounds. Kawhi, Harden, George scored or assisted on the Clippers' final 25 made field goals, a streak that extended back to the early second quarter. And oh yeah, by the way, they win at 103-95. The Clippers have gone 
25 and 5 since the start of December. That's the best record in the NBA over that span. They're the 16th since the merger to win 25 of 30 while averaging 120 points per game. The Bucks did it twice in the last five years, and Magic's Lakers, uh, they did it three straight seasons, and they won a couple titles. Show time. Rich Creamies are also the world champs. Denver worried about May and June games more than February. Portland in season three of its struggles. Jokic, uh, Nikola Jokic coming off a big game last Friday against the Trailblazers where he had a triple-double, his lead leading 15th there after the strip off the Andre Age. You see him get up for that massive dunk. Is that what that was? We're tied at 67. I tried to maybe oversell it. Jamal Murray, Jokic. Oh. He's good around the, the rim, even if he's not jumping very high. We're tied at 84. Murray, Jokic. How's your two-man game? 27 points through three for Jokic. Denver up two. Big fight there from the visitors. Murray, where did he get his book learner? Kentucky. Yes, he did. 21 points for him. Momentum on their side. They're up 94, 86. Peyton Watson, just 12 off the bench. 30 minutes of burn. But when you shoot one like that, you got to feel all good about your game. Here I am. Put me in a flag football game. Four minutes to go. Murray again. Jokic, 29, 8, and 7. Like, that's how he wakes up and gets out of bed at 29, 8, and 7. Nuggets, 112, 103. Each of the top four in the West, one on Sunday. So no movements in the standings. As for who's going to finish as the number one seed, the Clippers' hottest team in basketball, a 67% chance at the top seed, according to all those ESPN analytic math guys. From 70 points to surgery, Philly's MVP center Joel Embiid needs an operation to fix a meniscus problem in his left knee. But for now, Embiid will be out for extended period. Sources telling Woj that he could return by the end of the season. That's not out of a question. He'd had some soreness last month, and of course his leg got fallen on by one of the Warriors, averaging 30 points per game. Right now he's though played only 34 games. Two-player race for the MVP all season, Embiid Jokic, as it's been the last couple of seasons two weeks ago after scoring that franchise record 70 MB MB excuse me MB became the MVP favorite plus 115 night of the injury the odds moved to nine to one Jokic has been odds on favorite ever since and uh, um, you should have gotten those numbers earlier because that's going to change again 